Most of what you read about how to break into AI is wrong, not because it's incorrect, but because it's too vague to be useful. It's too high level. It's too general. Learn AI. Don't do that. Get specific. Get useful. I have spent the last few days taking apart 17 different career paths in AI that people are hiring for right now. I've looked into the job market, both where we're hiring and also where jobs are being destroyed. And I've come out of all of it with some overall takeaways for you, as well as some approaches to prompting that help you to figure out where you can career path yourselves and where you can skill up if you have a particular job role in mind. So. Let's dive into it. First up, let's get at the overall job situation. The World Economic Forum, I know you love to read them, says 170 million new AI jobs will be created by 2030. Yay, yay, break out the party hats. But 92 million jobs will be destroyed in the same period. So net gain, just 78 million positions projected. Stanford published research showing 13% unemployment or employment decline for workers aged 22 to 25 in AI exposed roles since late 2022. That is not news to anybody I know who is in that age demographic. Look at my gray hairs. I am not. So AI is simultaneously creating opportunities and it's automating entry level positions people use to break in. That's the paradox that we need to wrestle with and solve. So when you search how to break into AI in that world, you get one of two extremes. You get Let's learn Python in 30 days and become an ML engineer. Lots of lots of that. Or you get a little bit of gatekeeping, like you need to be a PhD from Stanford. Or you need to get into Y Combinator. You need to found your own startup. Both of these are suboptimal because they only apply to a very narrow subsegment of the overall population. If you look at the overall number of people interested in AI roles, not very many of them are going to be learning Python in 30 days. If you look at the overall number of people interested in AI, not very many of them or getting into Y Combinator and founding a company. And nobody talks about it as if AI is not a single career path, but a, but a wild maze of career paths that's developing. And I wanna start talking about it like that because that's how it actually is. Right now, when people say, how do I break into AI? It's sort of like a chef hearing, how do I break into food? I mean, that's a pretty general statement. Do you, do you wanna cook? Do you want to do front of the house? You want to do back of the house? You want to get into investing and owning restaurants? Uh, do you want to just be a tastemaker and hang out like Anthony Bourdain? Like, who knows? It's Anthony was a chef, but you get the idea. My point is that we need to get specific with career pathing, and that's what this video is designed to help get you to. First, let's get into some examples. An AI research scientist will need a PhD, will need published papers, and Meta is going to pay them a lot, right? Like Meta might pay them half a million dollars. An AI prompt engineer needs strong writing, doesn't need coding. They're not going to make as much as the Meta salary. They might make around six figures, but they also don't need the same background. A machine learning engineer Wow, that's showing tremendous growth year over year, but it is a technical role and you have to lean in on the technical chops. Meanwhile, AI Coach shows even stronger year over year growth at I think almost 60% according to the research I did, but it doesn't require the same technical chops as a machine learning engineer. These are entirely different roles with different prerequisites. So I wanna get at role specific qualification assessments that help get you an idea of where you stand. And that's the project that I've been working on. So let me set it up for you. I built 17 different assessment prompts. Each one is designed around a core insight about prediction. There's a piece that came out over the weekend from A16Z about how prediction is replacing postmodernism as the defining framework of our era. The idea is simple. Value creation is now about being predictive of the game rather than being predicted by the game. And that's exactly what these career assessments set out to do. They help you be predictive of your career path rather than being predicted by it. And that may sound like philosophy mumbo jumbo, but it's really relevant. I find the people who are able to make progress in AI are people who are able to accurately show intent and bridge that intent forward into the future by making specific bets on themselves. And what all I'm trying to do is set up prompts that help you make that kind of bet on yourself. The alternative is really simple. It's wasting six months, 12 months or more during a really high leverage period in human history, pursuing goals that don't fit you well. And that's what happens when we just generically pursue AI. The old postmodern career advice was everyone gets a personalized version of their career, right? Take this boot camp, learn this framework, you get a unique resume, you'll be fine. That's not really true anymore. And we're seeing that breakdown. What matters now is timing relative to the AI revolution. 
where you engage and when you engage with the AI snowball that is rolling and tearing down the hill. Are you early on AI governance when the EU AI Act makes it the hottest role next year? Or are you late to entry-level software engineering when those positions are down a bunch of percent? The assessment tells you where you stand, and that's what I set out to do, because then you can make a bet about where you want to go. So how did I build these prompts? Building the prompts required me to think about prediction and anticipation deeply. I took each prompt and structured it out as an eight-question interview, but the questions are not random. They're designed to extract signal about your qualification level from relatively limited information. Here's how I think about it. A good prompt anticipate what matters, and it anticipates what doesn't. So for an ML engineer assessment, I don't ask, do you know AI? I ask, rate your Python proficiency 1 to 10 and describe your experience with TensorFlow or PyTorch. Have you deployed models to production? That second part, the deployment piece, that's heavy signal. Lots of people will take a course. Relatively few will deploy to production with something meaningful. For an AI prompt engineer, I ask, can you share an example of heavily editing AI content to publication quality? Because that's a real skill. Anyone can generate the content. I've talked about this. The value is in the editing. The prompt anticipates the gap between what people think the job is and what it really requires. For AI governance specialists, another one, I ask about the EU AI Act specifically, not do you know regulations in general, but the EU AI Act is one of the biggest pieces of regulation on the planet around AI right now. Any company anywhere in the European Union, whether based there or not, has to deal with it. It's the hottest governance role in the new year, and the prompt anticipates the market reality. So these questions are structured to predict one of four outcomes. Either you're qualified now for the role, you're almost qualified, there are significant gaps, or it will just say you're straight up not viable. And I think the honesty is helpful. And also each category gets to a timeline, and that's where the prediction piece is there, and it gets a little fuzzy, right? Like three to six months for nearly qualified. Some people speed run that with AI, right? Six to 18 months for significant gaps, that's fair, but again, people can sometimes accelerate that if they lean into AI really hard. One of the things we forget is that AI is a kind of super skill, and if you learn how to learn with AI, you can speed run some of these challenges. So the prompt doesn't just assess current state. It predicts the path forward based on patterns that I've seen in real career changes in the data in 2024 and 2025. It's not theory, it's this has worked for people with your background. Let's look at a prompt. Okay, this is an AI product management prompt. As you can see, I have the same idea. You're setting up the interview at the top here, and you just want to ask eight targeted questions you're looking to get signal you can predict against. In this case, we're targeting product management. So we ask about overall PM experience. We ask about AI ML concepts, and we ask specific questions there, right? What is the difference between supervised and unsupervised learning as an example? I want to make sure that you're not just rating yourself one to 10 and kind of guessing or using Cluely to answer, that you're actually able to be honest about it. We go through, we talk about stakeholder management, strategic and analytic skills. We talk about leadership and communication. One of the things I want you to notice, AI product management is a great example of a role that's transforming and evolving, right? We are looking at classic areas of product management expertise that are evolving and changing in the age of AI. And I think part of the way forward is to map them to specific competencies. And so we start to look and say, how do we take classic experience with stuff like product strategy and road mapping and start to cross calibrate it with how you've built stuff with AI capabilities in the product? And so a lot of the magic of this assessment is actually putting it together, analyzing the responses and assessing how you qualify as an evolved role where you have both the PM piece and the AI piece. And then there's a personalized roadmap at the end because I want to leave you with something that's actually actionable, right? What are some recommendations that you can take with you? And this is useful, by the way, because you can depend on language models given this kind of prompt to go and search the web for the most relevant current courses and certification. I could have hard coded all of these and I chose not to because the space is moving so fast. And so instead, given that we have reasoning models that search the web effectively with a very strong anchor prompt like this, when it comes time to recommend, they are gonna look across your response set and be able to generate a custom list of courses for you that reflect your specific answers in a way that hard coding never could. And that's 
a reflection of where we're at with language models at this point in 2025. It's incredible. Like you can get them to actually think through all of this and on the fly recommend courses as long as you have a solid prompt. The salary reality check, this is one based on current market conditions. I could have also soft coded this and had them go, the, the prompt go out and benchmark the salary. I decided that was not worth it. I would rather prioritize the learning piece with the LLM tokens than the salary piece. And we can always update that over time. But it is reflective of where the market is at this point in the US. You'll need to discount it some for the EU. Finally, we get to the assessment criteria. I want you to understand how I assess this stuff so it's bold and transparent. I also want the LLM to be consistent about how to assess it. And that's it. Begin now by introducing yourself. So there, that, that's the prompt. It's actually not a magic prompt. I'm a big fan of showing how I prompt so you don't think I just do this stuff magically and it works. I want you to understand how it works. You know, the hardest part of building these prompts was building in anticipation of what people don't know they don't know. Most people applying to AI roles don't realize how transferable some of their skills are. A compliance professional doesn't recognize the transference potential to AI governance necessarily, and if they do, they don't know which skills transfer and which don't. Someone with five years of change management might not realize they're qualified for an AI coaching role with tremendous year-over-year -year growth. So I structured questions intended to surface those realities. I didn't just ask, do you have AI experience? I asked about the background, the real background, and the prompt explains how it maps. You have compliance background? That's a scarce resource, right? You can get there faster than a software engineer could. This all connects back to that prediction framework. We create more order in the universe by contributing information. That's sort of the central thesis of the A16Z point. It's been kind of bouncing around in my head. And I think that part of what we're doing with prompts like this is we are collecting information about what you actually have and bring to the table, not what you think you're missing, but what you actually possess. And then we predict the most efficient path to contribute that information into the AI job market. That is a path to value. That is a path to career success. And that's why I built this. The assessment also anticipates mistakes. I designed it to call out common failures, analysis paralysis, targeting the wrong role, unrealistic timelines. There's a lot that potentially derails people and the prompt strives to get after failure modes and address them up front. Here's what I keep coming back to. The A16Z piece talks about how being good at the internet became a monetizable career because prediction is an in the entire meta game. It's the entire game that we're playing in the economy right now. We literally share memes with probability prediction for game results, right? Like I uh, am a Seattle Mariners fan and there were memes circling about the probability of the Mariners winning this past weekend. And that's not the first time I've seen that. I've seen that for game after game after game, sports team after sports team after sports team. Prediction is a meme. The farther upstream you are in that information flow, the more likely you will be predictive of the game as opposed to being predicted by the game. And that's where these, what these assessments do for AI careers. They put you upstream in the information flow. Instead of spending six months learning Python and then realizing ML engineer isn't viable with your background, you know it very quickly in like 15 minutes. Instead of applying to 100 jobs and getting nowhere, you know more of which door to try first based on real market data and an AI customized conversation. So maybe you're going after the 41% growth in ML engineering roles, or even the 134% growth in AI content creator roles. That's insane. You're being predictive instead of being predicted. You're contributing information about your actual qualifications to the market rather than getting lost in generic advice that doesn't account for who you are. And this matters more now because of that entry-level job displacement that I talked about at the top of this video. The old path was get your entry-level job, learn on the job, advance. That is disappearing. The new path requires you to be strategic about which door you try first, and that requires prediction, but there haven't been very many resources about it, and that's why I created these prompts. I identified four overall pathways, if you want to ladder all of this up, that work in late 2025 headed into 2026. There's a technical bridge for people with a coding background into AI. It's a timeline of 6 to 18 months, depending on how fast you learn. There's a non-technical entry role for writers and creatives. That one's faster. It tends to be one to six months if you really lean in. There is a domain expert pivot, and that one really varies by your experience level with AI and the exact domain you're in. It's tough to predict, but from what I've seen, three to 12 months is pretty reasonable. And then there's a whole burgeoning, exploding governance and compliance uh, route. And that one is fairly linear. It's about three to nine months if you have some prior experience in any of the compliance roles. The key is those pathways have different timing. 
That's the prediction element. If you're a compliance professional, you can become an AI governance specialist a whole lot faster than you would become an ML engineer. And so the prompts help you predict the pathway that fits your background and then give you a little bit of a sense of the timeline and they might not give you what you want to hear, right? I wrote them to be honest, not to be comforting, because I think that's what we need in this moment. I wrote them to be true based on what we see in actual 2025 hiring requirements. The market is real. Amazon posted hundreds and hundreds of AI positions just in the first few quarters of 2025. Apple ditto, TikTok ditto. Everywhere you look, the AI-related roles are exploding. But Everyone's talking about AI like a singular thing. You need a personalized approach that's based on the real market data in 2025, something that allows you to start to be predictive rather than the one being predicted. You know, every prompt I write and every prompt you write is fundamentally about prediction. Given this chain of information, predict the next good thing. That's what good LLMs do. But prompts anticipate what the model needs to predict well. They structure the information flow. They extract signal. They account for what's missing. That's what these career assessments do. Given this person's background, predict their qualification level, predict their optimal path. And I had to anticipate what information mattered as I was constructing the prompt. The prompt acted as a bridge to help you put your intent together and predict across the future where you should go from a role perspective. I had to account for what pe people typically miss, the transferable skills, the market timing, the entry level displacement. And I had to package all of that into a prompt so that the LLM could predict the future in a way that was useful for you. Building good prompts is really about understanding what you are trying to predict, working backwards to figure out what information you need to predict it accurately, and then building that bridge. That is the craft of prompting, and I wish more people understood it. But TLDR, I built 17 different role prediction prompts so that you aren't asking about AI as a whole, you're asking about specific roles. So if you wanna learn more, you can head over to the Substack. I have all the prompts there. If you wanted to just dig into that prompt and dig into how I think about prediction and how I think about getting into the job market, I hope this video has been helpful as well.